Hello once again, it's Mr. Peach, your YouTube shop teacher. It's a Monday morning, and it's rainy outside, so you won't hear Tommy mowing. And uh, it's quiet and peaceful, but uh, the purpose of this video is that I did go to yet another auction over the weekend. And uh, if you think this is a bragging session, uh, turn it off right now, please. Rather, and I know I've already got some thumbs down. People uh, do that right away. Uh, we, we call them trolls, and there's no shortage of them. But indeed, I was number 53 yesterday or two days ago, and I didn't buy a whole lot. I got one tray of machinist tools, and we're going to go through that here in just a minute. And there are a few rusty items in this container. So I will be uh, doing some rust removal uh, in this video, so it'll be a, a three-day video, uh, the introduction here being real short. I have done a lot of rust removal over the years. Some people have said to me, why don't you do a rust removal? I have 13 or 14 videos on that, and I'll show you uh, the link and uh, the playlist for that here in just a second. Yes, there are 14 videos on rust removal, and there is a playlist, and if I remember, I'll put the link down in the description and maybe here on the screen. So check some of those out, because I'm not going to go into a great detail on this rust removal. It's, it's done in these other videos, and I'm going to use uh, evapo rust or evapo rust, whatever it is, on this. I've used it many times, and it is a good product, believe it or not. It's not a fantasy like many things that you buy in a can. A 95-year-old man has passed away, and it was his auction. There were a lot of people there because there were uh, many, many automotive items, uh, antique automotive items, and that brings people from hundreds of miles away. So bidding was pretty hot, hard, and heavy, but I did buy 500 pounds uh, worth of books and magazines and manuals. I just love old paperwork. A lot of it uh, was damaged either by water or mice and, uh, and, and mildew and so on, but there are a lot of car manuals and train books. He really liked trains, steam locomotives, and uh, things like that. So, and a lot of old magazines. I love to take magazines with me when I'm traveling, and then I immediately throw them away after I read them because they have no value. This, uh, <laughs> most of this I bought for $1 a container and I've already thrown over half of it away and I left a great deal of it on the auction wagon where other people immediately uh, attacked it like vultures thinking they were going to find something good and I I lost a few items I left them on the rack I guess it, it was it was such a scramble near the end I told you it was raining but it let up here just a little bit I bought these two transmissions they're identical. Does anybody know what kind of car they're out of? It's a floor shift, of course. So the reason I bought these is as follows. You know, I'm not sure I'll ever get around to it, but remember I bought this, or I was given this Powermatic 14-inch saw that I would like to convert into metal cutting. And I know those transmissions are big and awkward, but I've been struggling with all kinds of of devices to try to slow these saws down and if I could use one of these transmissions or a portion of it it would be a rugged way to reduce the speed uh, running it I suppose in either reverse or first gear and uh, do the transmissions work I don't know alright enough on that let's get back to the precision tools and by the way I know I keep getting sidetracked here but there were two hit and miss engines that sold at that auction as well as a big old lathe maybe I'll put pictures of those on here the big old lathe went for scrap metal because you know you couldn't have given it to me but the the hit and miss engines went pretty high but I have three hit and miss engines now I'm gonna do a video on this don't watch it if you don't like this old stuff <coughs> showing how these run <coughs> but I already did something on Instagram and uh, I mentioned I think I'm gonna sell these and they sold instantly just on, on those few words and who bought them and already sent me the money and is going to come here to pick them up in a few months 
none other than my buddy and one of the most famous YouTubers of all, Jimmy DeResta. Maybe I got a picture of him I can add here to the video. I've met him several times. He is a wonderful creator and an artist and a wonderful man, beloved by all who know him and watch him. This man was a machinist for the great Vactor company, and it had other names before it was uh, Vactor. And uh, there weren't a whole lot of machinist tools. I think probably the family uh, took some of them, but I have shown the wooden toolbox. Maybe I'll show you a clip of that here, too, uh, that these tools came out of. But they're primarily calipers. Do I need any calipers? No, i got a million of them. But let's go through this stuff. I keep saying that. All right. Now I really am going to go through it. They sold this wooden tool chest, and the tools that I bought came out of this chest. It was not in that good a shape. It is not a Gerstner. There's another picture of it. The mirror is broken or missing. And there's the decal, and the brand is Star out of Chicago. I am not familiar with it. And now I'm going to show you a short video that I took at the auction live on my phone. It's not very good, but here is the selling of that star tool chest. Be down in 20. I have a 30. I have a 20. I have a 30. I have a 40. I have a 40. I have a 40. I have a 50. 60. 70. Daughter. 80. Daughter. 80. Daughter. 80. Daughter. 80. Daughter. 80. Daughter. 80. Daughter. 90. 100. 100. 10. 110. 20. 120. 30. 130. 140. 140. 140. 150. Daughter. 80. 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 Daughter. I'm not sure if you heard that, but it sold for $180. Do you think that is too much, or is that reasonable? I would have given 40 This surface gauge, I had trouble finding the markings here, but it is a Miller's Falls. I didn't know Miller's Falls offered something like this, but it's in pretty good shape. These little pins work. I did put some oil on them already. But it is relatively crude compared to a, a Sterrett. Look at the machining marks on the end. Not that that has any effect on its performance, but uh, it's nice to have one of these in a larger size. And luckily the scriber and all the parts are included. Quite often there are things missing. Uh, there is an extra one of these. I wonder if it fits. It does, so that must, that must belong with it. Like I said, a bunch of calipers, and some of these are rusty or corroded, and those will be laid aside here. Already I have absconded with one of my wife's shoe boxes. You know, she does the, uh, the Franklin Graham uh, shoe box program, so there's a lot of these shoe boxes around the house. Anything that I'm going to de-rust, I will put in there. Here is a, a, a nice, well, that, that's got to go in the shoebox, too. A nice brown and sharp V-block along with the clamp, but there's only one of them. Usually they're sold in a pair, or used in a pair. That goes in the shoebox. Here, I don't like these wing dividers one bit, and I don't know what the name is on there, but that'll go in the shoebox. But let's look at some of the nicer tools here. There are a bunch of dividers, this one being, i got to get my glasses on here, that's a Lufkin. And the points look good. That's about a six-incher. There's a four-inch Craftsman in pretty good shape. I do like those, those points. They're easy to sharpen.
Here is an 8 inch brown and sharp hermaphrodite caliper. Pretty good shape. Now something like that does not need to be put in evapor rust. But perhaps just a little bit of touching up with steel wool. I'll, I'll put that with the calipers here. Let me dig through here real quickly. There's another rusty one for the shoe box. Here's like a bevel square. I think this is just a piece of junk, but that'll go in there. People get mad when I say junk. I'm, I'm not sure why. I don't know why that Craftsman label is, is in there. It's, made, it's metal. Does anybody know what year they used this logo? It was a range of years for Craftsman Sears. All right, now there's some nice uh, calipers here. This is, uh, I thought I saw the name on it. That's uh, Sterrett. And that is a six incher. Here's another Sterrett, I believe. And there are no owner's names on these, I don't believe. And this must be a eight inch. Here's a brown and sharp uh, tool maker's clamp that will get de-rusted and that's a four incher. Usually they're in pairs but there's only one of those. Now these two center heads here have no name on them. They are not stare, they are not brown and sharp. I don't know why there's two of them. I believe they are probably Miller's Falls. That's just a guess. Those are about useless. There are five Walton tap extractors for broken taps, and you know what? There's only one of them that is, is ruined. That's really surprising. You know, I'm not a big fan of these. We've talked about that many times, but there's some bent fingers on this little one, and I think the, the smaller ones were expected to be expendable. Here's a Wiggler, and it's marked Union Tool Company in pretty good shape and there's an extra point for it but what surprises me here I've never seen one of these where it has the ball and the point in one uh, piece unless that ball was added on but I doubt it because that would be kind of a tricky thing to do but there you got one point and that serves two purposes for edge finding that is I think you all know what these are or do you this is a wiggler Sounds like a horror movie, doesn't it? I'm not sure what this is. I recognize it, but it's a portion of something. I don't know. Do you know? Here are two inside calipers. You know, I really never use an inside caliper, do you? But there's a four incher, and that's from uh, the general company. But it's, it's pretty nicely made. They didn't make their own tools, I'm sure. And here's a six incher, and this is brown and sharp. And the points are in good shape. I don't think there's any denying that these smaller sterret outside calipers are a thing of beauty, a work of art. And that is about a two and a half incher. It's just, it's just gorgeous in its curves. And here is the companion in a much larger, that's a six incher. And I'm pretty sure it says stir it. No, that's Union. Which means they were buying it from stir it, don't you think? And just putting their name on it. And there's another one also with the general name on it. Lay that aside. Now these flat ones to me aren't as pretty. And this is a Craftsman. Now Craftsman also would have been made by a major company. But they changed suppliers. That's a four incher. And this one also is a Craftsman. And that is 8 inch. By the way, you measure these from the, the center of that pivot point to the end, which you can see is 8 inch caliper. 
Also included the, in the box a well used Kenamental manual. One of these. This is really a good book. I have several of these. Kind of dirty. This one is, I don't know, not, it's not readable. Seems to me these are a novelty anyway. Stare it, that's pretty well shot. Oh, this is interesting because this is the name of the company he worked for, Meyer Sherman. I knew Mr. Myers. I met him once. This later became Vactor. It is Vactor right now. If you've ever heard of a big Vactor uh, sewer cleaning machine, Mr. Myers, C. C. Robert Myers, did all of the printing there, the manuals and everything, and that was his passion. The night our industrial arts club visited that plant, he was an amazing man. But he, at that time, he was more interested in printing than they made milking machines and grain vectors and all kinds of things back then. But now it's strictly vector. Some of those Scully Jones, and here's his notebook on how to do certain things in the factory, how to set up certain machinery. So this is kind of interesting. He had very detailed notes in all of those books. He loved trains and cars and trucks and all of that. There's some shim stock. And that pretty much completes in this box except for the mouse turds. I won't show you those. Well, some of them are in there. <laughs> all right. What do you think I paid for this job lot of precision tools? At the end of the video, I will show you the auction ticket. I know some of you are going to say that, oh, you stole those, and others are going to say you paid way too much for a bunch of junk. But I didn't get them all that cheap. Uh, there was another man there that I know that he, he was bidding, and uh, he always does bid on anything that's sterile or brown and sharp. All right, let's go down to the basement shop and pour some evapo rust on this. I paid $15 for this a few years ago, and I think it's a, got about this much in it, so I'm going to go ahead and pour it into the shoe box here. I took this out. I'm going to do that later in a, a vertical container where it doesn't take so much of this vapor rust, and I think I can use it over and over. I don't know why I say oh, uh, vapor rust. It's vapor rust, evapor rust, I guess. I don't know. It's taking more than I would have thought. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. It's been 24 hours. As I came down the basement steps, I could smell this, but it's not all that unpleasant, but it does have a bit of an odor. Now, admittedly, last night before I went to bed, I did check these out, and I gave them a once-over with the Scotch-Brite, and they are looking pretty good. I'm going to do just a little bit more now, and probably not on camera, but also with a brass brush so I can get around some of these parts like this uh, pivot here. I do not like the color that you get with uh, Evaporust. It's kind of a matte, almost looks like it's been sandblasted, but of course it hasn't been. we still got some black staining, so let me... Uh, clean up a few of these then I'll get back to you. It's kind of messy but it's not that unpleasant to get that on your hands. I don't know if it hurts or not. I don't worry about it at my age. This, let me see what brand this is. Get my glasses on here. I sure can't read that. It's a 10 inch Newark, New Jersey, whatever it is. Wing dividers, like I said, I don't like these. Now, I've only finished two so far, but my technique after I take it out of the evapor rust and uh, I take it over to the sink and I run hot water over it, that'll take the chemical off and then it's hot enough to where the water dries uh, real quickly. So then I 
wipe it down uh, with a towel and then I am using WD-40 again WD-40 most of the free world does not know that it stands for water displacement formula 40 they did 39 that didn't work and 40 did it is really not that much of a lubricant but that'll take the water out of these joints and then looking at this one there is an owner's initials there and you can't read it here but it's made by union tool then I wipe them off get most of the WD-40 off and then I'll put some uh, typically sterile oil on them and you ought to do that right away before you get any flash rust that I suppose could happen I'm not real sure you know so that one is now done but boy is it stiff and I did try to loosen this screw up and I'll work a little more on that but I don't want to bugger it all up so that one's done and similarly this one is done so I'll go ahead and do the rest of them that are in here and then uh, get back to you after they're oiled well let me sh let me look at this one first of all this is that brown and sharp v-block and looking at this I was kind of surprised that someone has drilled into it it's not in good shape at all I would have thought that it was harder than that and could not be really penetrated but that is not hard and I do have again this which had no rust on it I didn't treat this I just washed it off real well yeah this doesn't look like a quality product even though it's a brown and sharp because you can see all the machining marks on it rather than grinding marks and it's pitted I still got it upside down okay I've wasted enough time on this and I do mean wasted I do not like the finish that you get it's just like I, I just said a few minutes ago almost like it's been sandblasted it did not remove any of the staining but I suppose I didn't expect that it's supposed to remove rust not stains so there's all kinds of stains and well actually quite a bit of pitting right here still a usable clamp but not good looking and really you need those in pairs this is scrap iron I can find no name on it it is badly badly pitted probably a tool I would never use anyway and again the stains and let's see this one came out pretty nice it's a union where is it oh I showed you that one already I guess it's this one yeah Union haven't been made in many years kind of stiff kind of incredibly stiff as is this one I'll see if I can free them up off camera but I'm I'm really losing interest real quickly on this now here's another one and I can't find the name on it because of the pitting very deep pits this is a very old tool but these all freed up okay and it moves freely compared to the other two but that's that's real ugly it's one grade above scrap iron that I showed already well that concludes this video on what I found at that auction I still got to oil these and clean up a little bit and I'm going to try to salvage the rest of that evaporust even though it's dirty I am going to put it back in a can because it's kind of expensive and, but I'll strain it so I don't get any of the, the uh, particle matter but uh, here's what, what would you say this whole pile is worth 20 bucks this I probably I do like I'll probably keep it's a good working v-block because it's already badly damaged by drilling so you know <laughs> it wouldn't hurt to use it just as a rough clamp 
and this I will save. I don't have a whole lot of the machinist clamps, but I think th this is a group that you know you'll probably find on eBay sooner or later. Again, thanks for watching. See you next time. I'm going to show you a few still pictures from the auction and that's all I took and here is the way the tools looked the machinist tools. there was only three or four trays of them that is the box that I bought there's a close-up of it and this box of high-speed steel is worth two dollars and is sold for twenty five. I did not bid on it. A friend of mine was there and wanted to bid on it. I bid on this box and was outbid. I don't care two hoots about all the feeler gauges but there was a beautiful little stare at die makers square right there that I wanted although I already have one. I did bid on this box as well and was outbid. A friend of mine bid and won this box. There was a couple indicators in there. One was a federal indicator and it was marked Studebaker Aircraft Division. I thought that was interesting. As promised, this is the auction ticket and I paid $40 for this job lot of CalPERS.